because we moved from Korea, moved from Seoul when I was 16. 16, and you yes. came here speaking fluent English? No, I didn't speak any didn't English. Speak English. Any, not a word? Not a word. How did you learn? Um, well, I guess I, I, um, I memorized the dictionary. <laughs> you memorized the dictionary? Seriously? I memorized the dictionary. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> yeah. And I, I try to hang out with people as much as possible. <laughs> Did you just start like going to high school, not speaking any English? Right. So my my old um, hometown in Cleveland, when we landed there, it was such a rural area that there were there was nobody who actually met a live Asian person. So I will not consider any tax hike of any form until. Illinois can prove that we can attract new businesses and new residents into the state. Okay, that's a, that's a pledge. That's a pledge. Me, my kids are going to be around, and I hope to be around in Illinois 30 years from today, too. It is really important. It is really important that we fix this now, not 30 so, years from today. So some people say in America, in America with mm -hmm. democracy, mm -hmm. the voters should pick their representatives. Right. So but instead... I'm leading, but I think this is where you're going. Right. So gerrymandering gives the politicians to 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 pick the power to pick the voters they rather than it. the voters okay. picking the politicians. That's Th the problem. That's not good. It's not good, but it's even, it's especially a problem in my district. Why? Because this is really diluting the minority votes in my district, where uh, thousands of Black and Latino voters who are active and eligible voters were were cut out of my district. In your district, the, in my the district, 18th. This 18th, well, they, it's not, they're, not, they're not in my district anymore. They were sent even packing. Part of, they were, they're they, like immigrants sent out of the 18th. Now they have right. to immigrate to a new they're district. Part of, okay. They're part of Evanston, the black and Latino neighborhood. It is cut into, split into three different districts. So their political what are they? power. What are the other ones? They're in uh, District 17 and some are in District 14. Okay. But their political power is greatly reduced. Wait, in almost every substantive issue problem that you're asked to deal with in the state of Illinois, budget, what? social, or otherwise, you think will be handled better if you have redistricting that allows a fair representation of because each district. Because we're going to have elected okay. officials who are willing to work across the aisle. And we're going to have a culture where bipartisanship is the norm rather than the exception. The bipartisanship should be beyond just the occasional bipartisan bills that they pass. Mm. It has to be the overall the, culture, everyday culture in Springfield. That's what and you're it's about. Not. That's what I'm about. And I guess Gable came in in 2010. She had a chance to vote on the redistricting. In redistricting occurs in 2010, 2011. Right, okay? 2011, right. They pass a law in the State House. Right. She, somebody from the 18th District, had a chance to say, do they support that redistricting proposal? Not to change oh, the way right, we right, do right, it. Right, right, right. That proposal. She was there as the Democratic state rep. She was do you there. think she probably voted to support that redistricting proposal? I'm not going to make any kind of assumption I'll or bet guess, you, but I'll I, bet will, you, I will I'll bet go back you the back house, in. okay? <laughs> you think she's going to say no? I will go back Robin, and come on the, the show and tell me that I got it wrong. Okay? <laughs> You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and lots of public policy this evening because we have as our guest state rep candidate Julie Cho. She is running, she is the Republican nominee running in the 18th State House District, which the great majority, about 51% or so of the district, is Evanston. Another 25 or so is split between Wilmette and Oneka. And then Kenilworth, Northfield, Glencoe, not necessarily in the order, but um, in Glencoe, as I said, Northbrook, Glenview, Technique, that remain, those areas make up the remaining 25%. So if you're watching this and you're downstate, or you're watching it on YouTube and you're in Massachusetts, still relevant, even if you can't vote it's Illinois, so you're never sure who can vote for anybody, but probably he can't vote um, for Julie. I mean, even though the motto here, you know, in Chicago is vote early and vote often. You know? and, but seriously, but seriously, folks. So we're talking about a lot of state issues that are happening in Illinois. But a lot of these issues are, and so it's not just the 18th. It's certainly true around the state of Illinois. 
A lot of the issues we're talking about certainly relate to anywhere in the state of Illinois. I decided to run because mainly uh, my husband kept poking me. Well, you want to think about moving to Wisconsin? And I said, no, why would I do that? Well, Illinois is kind of, this is kind of going downhill. And he would ask me every couple of weeks, do you want to think about moving to Wisconsin? No. And then he got tired of me keep saying no. And he said at one point, well, at some point, you're going to realize that we will have to move out. It, the, the state of Illinois is the way it's going. There's no solution. It's not sustainable. You're going to come to a conclusion that we're going to move to other state. And if we're going to do that, he was saying, we want, we want to do that when the kids are still younger so they, they, they can get adjusted to the new school, new environment. Um, that was his reason. So I said, OK, well, what if we fixed it? What, what if we fixed the problem? Because I want to stay here. I want to stay in Illinois. Okay. I want my kids to grow up in Illinois. I want them to come back to the state after they, they're done with their college, if they do go away out of state for wow. college. Wow, what, what attracts you to, you live in Wilmette, are you attracted to Wilmette? Your other areas in this district, Evanston, Winneka, Kenilworth, you know them, Northbrook, uh, Northfield. Well, this, this is area, why do you like this area? Um, <coughs> The area, the Illinois, at least where I live in, right? Yeah, in, in like, our, yeah. In our do you district, like your little area, the 18th? In, in, our, in our district, at least, this is a very diverse neighborhood. We're very close to Chicago, to yeah. the city. We have all the all the access, cultural and um, business access to uh, the large city, the benefits of large city. At the same time, uh, we're, there's a little bit of distance. It's a it's good neighborhood okay. where people are good. There's enough enough diversity. I can go to Korean gro grocery store, Korean restaurant. You're Korean. Thai, yeah, Thai restaurant. Also, like, yeah. All within 10 minute drive. Okay. You don't find too many places in America. It's like that. It's I, I grew nice. up in okay. Ohio. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, I grew up part of my childhood in Ohio in Near Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah, okay. Cleveland, because we moved from Korea, moved from Seoul when I was 16. 16, and you yes. came here speaking fluent English. No, I didn't speak any didn't English. Speak English. Any, not a word. Not a word. How'd you learn? Um, well, I guess I I, um, I memorized the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> you memorized the dictionary. Seriously? I memorized the dictionary. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I I try to hang out with people as much as possible. <laughs> Did you just start like going to high school, not speaking any English? Right. So my my old um, hometown in Cleveland, when we landed there, it was such a rural area that there were there was nobody who actually met a live Asian person from that town. Really? So this is like yeah. far out of Cleveland. There oh, might yeah, have yeah. been a so, few Yes, Asians this is actually, this Cleveland. was not even a suburb of Cleveland. It's this like was like an excerpt or Yeah, something. right. Okay. So yeah. from yeah. Chicago, You were like at a rarity. Like People like come and look at her and say, what is this person? She is yeah. like an Asian or something? Or? Right, right, okay. right. Well, we were, we were, well, you know, we came with my entire family. So I had yeah. my cousins, my brother, and my grandparents were with us okay. too. So, you know, all of us. Okay, so you didn't just like first day you were here go to high school, start like September or something. Because we're taping on September 20th. There's a new, this is a new academic year. Uh, you had a little time to adjust before your first well, day of we school? Came, we came July 25th. Oh, so you had a few months before school? Yeah, July 25th. You, and could, then, you could sit down and memorize that dictionary for two months. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know that I had to memorize dictionary. I figured, yeah. you know, once I start school, things are going to just all work out, you know, on its they'll, own. They'll teach and you then, English. <laughs> yeah, okay. and then I found out that, oh, no, that's not the way it is. And there's no one who could speak Korean. There's no one wow. who could actually translate. translate anything. So, yeah, so I started memorizing the dictionary. <laughs> and so, but somehow you did it. You started taking classes that first year when you were here, right, in high well, school? Yeah, I was in 10th grade. You were 10th grade, 10th so, grade. You, well, so you remember what you were taking, like English and so history? So we took English. For, you know, we were taking a lot of um, reading, uh, writing classes. So th these were not the advanced reading classes, obviously. Yeah. So. Um, but you were taking reading. Yeah, taking reading, writing. Literature. Um, literature. History. And you were able to understand people no, even though. No, so we, I, I wasn't taking history at the time yet. Okay, so, yeah. But I think I was taking civics class and I civics. was having a really difficult time. Couldn't take any notes because I didn't understand anything. Yeah. I had really nice friends around me Would who were you. willing to help. Um, so there was a kid who, who, was, who volunteered. A teacher asked and, and, and a kid volunteered to 
take notes. Well, I mean, he was taking notes for himself, but he would volunteer to share every day. Okay. At the end of the day, um, he would share. He would, he would make like, copies. He would he'd be make like copies. a tutor. Not a tutor. He a mentor. Make, he just help no, you. No, no, no. He, he would just make aid, copies of his, the notes he took, so, and he would give it to me so that you, I could study. And you could sort of read it, even though you didn't know English yet. Well, well you know, by, by the time I had a dictionary, I was so I, I had memorized halfway, right? Yeah, half so the you, dictionary, so I knew. It. So you <laughs> could read some of what he wrote. Right. You'd read his notes, and that was helpful too. Right, you. and then if I if if I get stuck with any words, then I could look up the dictionary. Okay. So this, this is the time of paper dictionary. Okay. So fast forward. Yeah. Somehow you got through high school. So I got through high school. And I where'd made you a go to college? Uh, I I was still in Cleveland. I went to Case Western Reserve. Pretty in good Cleveland. school. You got that was a tough school, yeah, but you got school. in. Yeah, but I got in, and I graduated. And and after that, uh, what'd you do? You like? So I met my husband at Case. Yeah. He's a mechanical engineer out of okay. Case Western Reserve. And um, out of college, we got married, and we were kind of settled in Cleveland. Yeah. But I really wanted to move out of Cleveland and go to a bigger city because it came from Seoul. I Which mean, is a pretty big city. It's a, it's a pretty big city. It's bigger than Chicago. Yeah. So we we visited Chicago a lot um, after we got married and you know, it's like, I mean... Chicago, you thought Chicago, you'd want to go this there. Is, yeah. This is close enough to my family. So I you could, applied to school here? No, I would look for, we both looked for jobs so here. So you took a job here in Chicago? We took jobs here, yeah. yeah and okay. we used it as an excuse to come. To, to Chicago. Chicago. We actually lived in the cool. city for a while yeah, okay. when we so first came. So you, so you had jobs. How long did you work? How long did I Before work? Before you went back to school. You went back to school oh, at some point. Oh, when I first went back to school, I was actually still working. So how so long working, were you working before you went back to school? Um, four years, five four years. years. And where did you four go years, to school? Four years. I, so I went to um, University of Chicago. My first degree was social work. Social work. Yeah. So they okay. call it social service administration. Oh, like SSA yeah. or something? SSA, right. So it's like SSA. a two-year program. It's a two-year program. So you, I was working at the hospital. So the hospital. I worked University of Chicago Hospital? University of Chicago Medical Center and then Children's Center. Memorial. Okay. Now it's Lori. With your children's. doing work related to social work or SSA? No, this, no, no. So um, what kind of work I were was, you doing? I was stu I studied healthcare policy. Healthcare policy. Okay. Yeah, I studied healthcare policy. So I fast forward, and, and then you eventually went back to school. I eventually went back to school to business school business to get school. my MBA. Where was right. that? This was at, at University of Chicago. Booth. Booth. Okay. Yeah. So you have an MBA. So I have an MBA. And eventually, you moved up. You're here in the North Shore. I mean, you were living right. in Wilmette. We, right. We and moved when our kids were. Um, we're going to do a real older. fast forward. Fast forward. Right now, you got three kids, right? I got three kids, right? Their ages, their genders? 12, 9, 6. It's girl, girl, boy. 12 girl. year old girl, 9 year old girl, and 6 year old boy. Uh, okay. The boy is the baby. Yeah, okay. the baby. 6, 9, 12. And they're going to school, public schools in Wilmette, right? In Wilmette, yes. First grade. First grade, fourth grade, and seventh grade. And then, so you just woke up like, what, a little while ago and said, you're basically, are you stay-at-home mom now? Or are you working while you're, while you're raising your brood? No, I'm not a, I'm not a stay-at-home mom. You're until, working? No, I, yes, I was working um, in healthcare. In healthcare. Industry. Until, Until you decided to run? I just decided to and run. How long ago was that? That was 12 months ago. So 12 months ago, you so say you're taking a break from your job. Taking a break. And now your new job is running for state rep, right? <laughs> if you could call it a job. It is. Well, just how many hours a day do you put into this thing? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> a lot. About as much as if you have right, a regular more, job right. or more. I mean, I think you'll, yeah. you'll realize, too, as you talk to me, that as, as I run on a Republican ticket, some of my ideas are very progressive and if you didn't know that I was running on a Republican ticket you would have thought that I was a Democrat. Democrat. Okay. So I'm, I'm a good example I'm a candidate running on a Republican ticket and at the same time I have ideas that are very progressive that you would typically think is a Democratic platform. So I believe most Wait, people... Would you have any ideas who are Republican ideas and uh, would be part of a Republican platform? Yes, I do have that too. You do have yes, that right. too. So I there's some mixture. Too. Right, okay. right, right. right. So, but my, okay. my point is, though, my point is, though, that uh, most of the vast majority of the voters are like me, that they don't necessarily agree or disagree with one particular party values and ideas and, and platform. It's They agree with... It's a, it's, it's a range. You think they'll and vote that way, so we started out a long time ago on um, the person at the door. We kind of 
went away from that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's not a totally scripted show. Okay. So, but back to that person at the door, as you hit 5,000 or more doors, right. you're telling me you're hitting people who are a little bit Republican, a little bit Democrat in your view. Mm -hmm. They may be one or the other for how they usually vote or something or how they would describe themselves. But in terms of their ideas, in terms mm -hmm. of what they want, you think they're susceptible to your positions because you're saying you're kind of like them or they're like you, right? Right. I think the reason, I'm not a career politician, first yeah. of all. I'm okay. not trying to be in it for 10 years, 20 years, or make a career out of out of politics, right? I have. Is that a difference between you and Robin Gable? Because she's your incumbent opponent. I don't really, Would I can't you? speak for what she wants and what she does. Let me just take a step. Okay, like, I mean, they say never ask a woman how old you are. But how old are you? 29. Okay, 29, very good. <laughs> yes, I think I know where that came from. No, but seriously, tell people. I Is am 47 years old. And yeah. your opponent, how old is she? Um, Ballpark, I think you know. I, I don't know, 63? Yeah, 63, 64. Okay, and she's spent the last eight years mm -hmm. as the representative of For the 18th district, 18th district right. state rep. Yeah. Do you think she's more of sort of a career politician than you? Is that a distinction? I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm trying to create an issue contrast. And I'm not for Robin or not for you. I'm trying to look, are there differences? We'll get to issues in a moment and positions. But now we're torn the core gut. You've talked about who you are and what you are and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I know you're not here to talk about Robin, but let's give him a little bit. Do you sort of differ or do you think she's, you're 47, she's 63, 64, she's been in her office for eight years. Do you really want to do that? You. She might stay another eight years. That's conceivable, right? Would sure. you? Could you think of yourself as staying a state rep for sixteen years? Me myself, no. But well, the dire um, problem that Illinois is facing, which is also why my husband was saying let's move out of Illinois, was it's a financial instability that we have currently in Illinois. When you say fiftieth, like, yeah, fiftieth, you, it's you it's cannot be dead last. <laughs> dead last. Like, just so. So we're clear, folks. This is saying, like, you cannot be more financially unstable as a state than Illinois. And I was thinking back in physics, if you put a pen, like, at the edge of the table, okay, and you try to balance it, and it becomes, as you pull it closer and closer, where more and more of the pen, you folks might not be able to see this, but if you can, you see I've got a pen here, and I'm pushing it more and more to the edge of the table. Eventually, more of the pen is over the table, or the edge, than is left on the table. So I just do that a little bit more, and it gets closer. And now it's like a teeter-totter. That's Illinois, a teeter-totter. It's starting to weigh down on one side. Kids watching this at home, don't try this at home. Could be okay. <laughs> Teeter -totter. You could actually make the, the pen fall. It falls. So <laughs> physics, there must be something there. But seriously, folks, seriously, Illinois is on the brink of financial disaster. And 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 this, <coughs> this, this, this is me. not this is not my claim. The, this is this is <coughs> okay. This ranking that Illinois Illinois comes at the fiftieth with in terms of financial stabi stability. This is this is reported by U.S. News and World Report. So it's authoritative. This is, this, is a, this is a credible source. Credible. Credible certainly. source of ranking that that's not okay, my so ranking. Okay, so we've made that point. We've made that point. We have the worst government credit rating in the country. Okay. Worst. So we're unable, some manifestations of that, we may not be able to invest as much in in education as we like. We call these public right, investments. Right, 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 right. I mean, we, you know, where the state is currently unable to make meaningful investments in, in education, uh, <coughs> infrastructure, housing. Uh, Taking care even of its most vulnerable. Right. Some people are clearly vulnerable, unable to take care of themselves, and they need help. Some can, like adult people with adult disabilities. Right. They can work, they can do things, but they need a little assistance. And most people in Illinois and throughout this country are fair. And when they see people with certain disabilities that they don't have, they want to reach out and help them, okay? And it's kind of frustrating to be in a state where people want to help people who are in need, and we may not be able to because we got to pay our bills. It includes Medicaid bills. You know what Medicaid is? Medicaid, Medicaid is the, the safety net insurance 
coverage program for the low-income residents. And I have some of those in my district as well, just as you know, all districts do. And if they don't pay <coughs> the doctors and hospitals, if, they, if the state doesn't reimburse the doctors and hospitals for the services that they provided to the Medicaid patients, guess what's going to happen? They'll know the, the doctors and the nurses and the hospitals won't provide those services because they're not getting paid. Well, it's not going to go to that extreme because doctors and nurses well, will never provide, turn away well, any patients. Well, they provide fewer <laughs> services because they have to make a living, too. Well, they, they're so going to be... So some people will get less ser fewer services than they otherwise would if Illinois right, paid its bills. Right, because they That's have to That's a more to precise see, statement. Right, okay. well, that would be a more accurate description okay. because they have to stay in business. For them to stay in business, so then real they have, people to, they have your, to see more, more paying patients. So peop so. some people in your district who are using Medicaid... Correct. are going to have real pain and suffering. Right. They're going to go to somebody and they say, well, I can't see you now, maybe come back in a week, because they have to space in some people who are paying their bills who mm -hmm. aren't relying on Medicaid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, they're not bad people, but they have to pay their bills as well. But that's illogical, right? That's, so, that's something that, so that's that could happen. So this I'm is, not saying <clears throat> that hospitals are doing that. Yeah, I don't this want is a to real accuse reason, falsely. But this is a real reason for you, for people who are watching this, to be concerned. If there's somebody who is on Medicaid, they may not get as many services as they should. Or as quickly. Or as, as quickly. quickly. They may have to wait longer. And their right? neighbors who care about these people will be concerned because they don't want people to suffer. Right, and <coughs> I happen wrong. to be in a district where... It, oh, okay. to the, to the, we got you. We, okay. Yeah, okay. And my, my, my people are very caring so people, people in my district. So some people say in America, in America with mm -hmm. democracy, mm -hmm. the voters should pick their representatives. Right. So but instead, I'm leading, but I think this is where you're going. Right. So gerrymandering gives the politicians to 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 pick the power to pick the voters they rather than it. the voters okay. picking the politicians. That's Th a problem. That's not good. It's not good, but it's even, it's especially a problem in my district. Why? Because this is really diluting the minority votes in my district, where uh, thousands of Black and Latino voters who are active and eligible voters were were cut out of my district. In your district, the, in my the district, 18th. This 18th, well, they, it's not, they're, not, they're not in my district anymore. They were sent even packing. Part of, they were, they're they, like immigrants sent out of the 18th. Now they have right, to emigrate to a new district. Part of, okay. They're part of Evanston, the black and Latino neighborhood. It is cut into, split into three different districts. So their political what are they? power. What are the other ones? They're in uh, District 17 and some are in District 14. Okay. But their political power is greatly reduced. Wait, and I guess Gable came in in 2010. She had a chance to vote on the redistricting. Redistricting occurs in 2010, 2011. Right, okay? 2011, right. They pass a law in the state house. Right. She, somebody from the 18th district, had a chance to say, do they support that redistricting proposal? Not to change oh, the right, way we right, do right, it. Right, right, right. That proposal. She was there as the Democratic state rep. She was Do you there. think she probably voted to support that redistricting proposal? I'm not going to make any kind of assumption I'll or bet guess, you, but I'll I, bet will, you, I will I'll bet go back I'll bet you the house, okay? <laughs> you think she's going to say no? I will go back Robin, and come on the, the show and tell me that I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, you go back and come back and tell us. But the point but, is but most the, Democrats, it would be fair to say, supported that proposal, right? Because right. they vote, tend to vote party line. Many Republicans voted against it. They vote party line, right. too. I'm not saying Repu this is how the way of the world is, okay? I've just described this process. The main reason to describe it quickly is I sense you want to change it. I want to change it. And, and in fact, it's not just me. 72% of Illinois okay. residents want this fair redistricting reform, taking the power out of the politicians' hands to redraw the line and give it to an independent commission, right? And okay. so that That's your dream. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And the reason why it's important to you is if we don't do this, we talked about this tremendous fiscal problem, okay? We talked about this tremendous fiscal problem, and, you know, the $200 billion in unfunded liabilities. So it's important liabilities. to me for two reasons. Okay. It's important why? to me for two reasons. Why? One, um, I want to make sure that my, my minority voters in my district, they, they have their p collective political power. Right yeah, now it yeah. is split into three districts and their 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 voices their voices yeah. split it is not fair okay. it is not fair so that's, so that's number one that's number one that's number one number reason two? why i care so much about this number two um 
unless we have fair redistricting reform and give the power back to the voters and, and away from the politicians, we can't change the culture in, in, in Springfield. One of the reasons why we have such a financial you know, state of financial instability is because we have a culture in Springfield where no Democrat, no Republican, no politician right now is, is taking the shared responsibility. They're constantly bickering. They're constantly blaming each other. They're you think it would be different finger, if we, you think there would be different kinds of people elected if you had fair redistricting, you didn't have gerrymandered districts, you had 18, 118 state house races that were competitive, that weren't like 70% one way and 20% the other. With redistricting, it might somebody's going to win or lose, but it may be more like fifty-two, forty-eight. Well, the right? reason that is it's that gonna, your point? Well, the reason that it's going to work is because if you if the voters have the power to elect okay. elect legislators, then the voters can um, hold the politician accountable, right? So if the politician is not, if the legislator is not okay, doing her or his job, here. Let me ask they a few can, the voters can fire that politician by electing somebody there's else. 200 billion, Our voters right now don't have that power. Okay, there's $200 billion in unfunded pension liabilities. Correct. Big problem. Big problem. People don't know. People coming into the state, you might say, every person coming into the state inherits a, a liability of about $40,000, okay? Every family taxpayer. Look it up, truthinaccounting.com, okay? A big, you come here? Hey, you owe us forty thousand dollars. You leave? Hey, you don't have to pay the forty thousand. So people make that rational decision. They go out of here. Okay, that's one way. And with redistricting, you think would cause somehow somebody to be able to solve this two hundred billion dollar unfunded pension liability problem? Well, it's 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 going to be a huge step towards it. How do huge we? Step. Okay. Well, right. Because I'm going to ask state... you real quick. A real. I'm going to try to give as much yes or no, and then you come back. We only got a few minutes, so I'm going to ask you like almost a Rorschach test. Sure. Okay. So yes, you think that'll make it better. We'll see how. Like okay, if we don't do anything and we try to pay that two hundred billion dollars, one thing we surely have to do is raise taxes significantly, right? Correct. Okay. You don't want to raise taxes significantly, do you? Or do I you? don't. No, I will not consider any tax hike of any form until Illinois can prove that we can attract new businesses and new residents into the state. Okay, that's a, that's a pledge. That's a pledge. And almost every substantive issue problem that you're asked to deal with in the state of Illinois, budget, what? social, or otherwise, you think will be handled better if you have redistricting that allows a fair representation of because each district. Because we're going to have elected okay. officials who are willing to work across the aisle. And we're going to have a culture where bipartisanship is the norm rather than the exception. The bipartisanship should be beyond just the occasional bipartisan bills that they pass. Right. It has to be the overall culture, everyday culture in Springfield. That's what you're and it's about. Not. That's what I'm about. Me, my kids are going to be around, and I hope to be around in Illinois 30 years from today, too. It is really important. It is really important that we fix this now, not 30 so years from today. You come back next week and every week to public affairs. Not to see people, Berkowitz, he's nothing, okay? But to see candidates running for or holding office like state representative candidate in the 18th district, Julie Cho. She is the Republican nominee, and we would so much like to have the Democratic nominee and the incumbent, Robin Gable. We haven't had enough of these shows lately where we have both opponents on. Berkowitz gets to shut up. Julie and Robin get to talk. That sounds pretty good, right? I'm, I'm open to that. All right. Come back next week and every week to Public Affairs. Public Affairs very much thanks Rizidco, our sole underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible.